Yo, JD here, Terrell Limus, and as you can see by the title of this video, this is going to be Mastering Monza, which is a new series that I'll be doing, where basically it'll be kind of like the set tips and tricks that I used to do quite a few years ago now, and this is basically just going to go into maximum detail as much as possible into every single track, starting with Monza here because we've got it in AOL this weekend, and just go into as much detail as possible in terms of how I prepare for the race, the, the strategy, the fuel strategy, the, the setups for the wet and the dry, uh, pointers and just in certain corners or how we, I really feel you should set the car up and actually approach each corner on the track. So I'll be trying to go in as much detail as possible for this. And So if you do like the video then please leave a like because I'm planning to do this for every single one and hopefully it should be really helpful for you guys um, who are preparing for league races or even career mode and stuff like that. But for this here, we're in time trial, and the first thing I would say in, in terms of preparation, I would only use time trial just to get familiar with the track. I really wouldn't base your setup on it at all, because you'll see later in the video, the setup is really completely different from what you would use in TT, because in TT, it's just a lot easier to get away with a, a very oversteery car, a lot more of a grippier car. So it's good to get familiar with the track, but for me, preparation should always, always be online, especially if we're doing a league race here. So we'll be able to look at the setup and you can pause it and just see 11 ballasts that we use in this. Um, so that was a really good lap, 19.8 clean, but my recommendation is only use it to get used to the track. Now we are in Grand Prix mode rather than TT. And I feel this is definitely a better option than time trials for reasons I said time trial the figures of the game just the feeling of the car is really no comparison to how it's going to feel online and this is a lap I did uh, with a slightly tweaked setup so 100% diff um, and I'll show you at the end or well, at the beginning of the race of exactly what I used for this one but fortunately you can see it's really annoying but this lap was actually corrupted slightly very very annoying because this was a 20.1 in Grand Prix mode which as I said I, I don't feel is still the most optimal thing I feel racing online for the actual real car that you're going to be in it feels slightly different and that is the best way and that is the, really the only way I really ever prepare for a league race like ever so that's definitely what I recommend use TT just to get familiar with it um, but if there's no one else online then of course go to Grand Prix mode but always if you can go online if you're doing a league race but if you are doing career mode then obviously you can just jump in this Grand Prix mode and do this but we're going to come across the line as it freezes again but we do a 20.1 which was pretty good as you saw for my TT lap it's only a few temps slower than that so that was very good but now we are going to jump to the wet and people always ask me do you change setup for the wet and no I don't really change setup the only thing I change is really my differential and depending how I'm feeling it's going to be uh, the ballast that I'm using but I actually kept the same ballast the only thing I changed was the 70 diff as you can see down below there so in the wet you really want to be braking about 10, 10 to 20 meters earlier than what you do in the dry so coming into here now I want to be braking about 150 meters rather than 120 again absolutely critical that you get over that curb before that second chicane I can't really emphasize that enough that gains you about two to three temps every single time and I'll show you an example of why you need to do that but coming through here normally in the way you want to be using actually you want to get into higher gear quicker that's an absolute must that you need to do and definitely downshift slower to so just really try and pace yourself so over here 20 meters out, 120 meters out downshift really slowly goes slow in fast out for this corner and you can see by the the fuel we go down to standard rather than going all the way down to lean i just do two clicks and i do that for every traction zone because that just gives me less wheel spin so just a better run off the corner so you can see standard mix here Lines are not really as dependent as they are in a drive, but going once the car's straight, that's when we'll be going to max settings and then going across the line. We did a 30.1, which was a, a pretty good time actually in the wet. That was a really good time. But now the race. And for the race up, one five wing, as we were doing before, 
and we were using 100 diff in qualifying but I'm going to move that back down to 85 and the reason why I would suggest that is in qualifying you want to just extract the maximum as possible so 100 diff will give you that maximum traction completely but in the race you want to be more consistent and running on 85 diff will just enable you to control the car through traction going through corners so it will just create a lot less oversteer or, or just a risk of a snap going through the corners and this set that I'm running here today is quite different to my other ones and this is purely for stability because I'm using 10 ballast as you'll see in a second 10 ballast with the low wings it just enables me to get awesome traction really really good traction and it enables me to throw the car into the corners of without having to worry about the, the rear end sliding it's a very very planted site planted setup pretty much in this and that's the reason um, why I've done it in this video here today but we're going to do the first lap here and just jumping on board for this one and just getting a good start you can see already the traction we had was insane and for the start of the race you always always really want to go about I'd say about 20% or 20 to 30% of the revs at the start and then once once the lights go out then you want to just build up really slowly up to the 100% but go through this this is the first you came here so braking very early clipping that curb could have clipped it a little bit more but the second one you do not want to hit as much but it is crucial that you sacrifice speed going to that second chicane because my mindset before attacking this track was you know you've got to really attack it to just try and you know control you know get as much speed as possible but really slow in fast out is an absolute must through there and you it doesn't feel like you gain time but, but believe me you definitely do gain a lot of time and same for this corner in the race my suggestion is really not to attack it to go and slow in fast out again because if you get a fast exit onto the straight you may lose maybe a tenth or two tenths but you'll gain potentially more time in if it's straight so braking at the end of that green part of the track and we'll be talking racing lines as well my braking points so we'll go complete this first lap and let's see what this is this is a 26.1 which is not really a bad lap at all but we're going to go through the first chicane or this first corner we want to be breaking about just at 150 meter ball but a little bit deep there so in the race you can't break as you did in qualifying as we would usually do there you've got to break about 10 or so meters earlier per corner in the race really but we're going to go through this second chicane now and this is an example so we're going to break about just before 100 meter board and we're clipping it this time and you can see how unsettled the car is it makes it super super tight for the next part of the corner and that's not what you want to do so on this lap we're going to go through the whole lap and talk through really how you really should do it so you want to be breaking 110 meters out so break it slightly earlier this time avoid these curbs as much as possible a slight kiss but it's okay once the car's straight that's when we've going absolutely full throttle and now completely flat out for this corner try and stay nice and tight minimizes the distance of the track again can just save you a bit of time it's important so now about 120 meters out slow in all over this curb don't hit the second part as much as possible you can see how much of early on we're on the throttle there just after the 50 meter board about middle of the apex really trying to attack this and for this one just before the 50 meter board that's when we want to be braking as the car's straight that's where we're going to full throttle you can run on that curb it doesn't really spit you out too much but i'd say probably a half a car's width of the absolute max look for the black box as you pass that that's your breaking point so slow in try not to go as super much on that curb as much as possible we're a little bit too much on that curb but still just about okay but definitely slow in fast out want to hit about the middle of the apex of the right hand side and for this the green part of the track as that finishes want to do a relatively late apex of this corner short shift if you need to going up through the gears now stay tight to the track again do this every lap because it will gain you a bit of time and we do a 23 uh, point three, and we did two laps i think we did two laps on our qualifying run as well so that is a pretty good time but coming through this now and you can see when you overshoot it the car really does not like that at all so again it's crucial that you really go in early and get a good exit so coming through this once again this is what i mean you really want to be doing this as much as possible to so just get on that curb because it really grips the car 
going around the corner. Very, very crucial. But for this, try not to get on this curb too much because, again, as you can see there, a little bit squiggly. But on this, half a car length, half a car's width is the max you want to do on that second one. But now, coming into this again, you can see clipping this again. But you can see going a little, just kissing those curves just really unsettles the car. So, as I said, really try and focus on just really riding the first one. But now coming into here, the pit stop, or you want to be braking at just on the line, so going in slow motion, you can always look back, but I felt this was pretty important as well for league racing. You really want to know exactly want to, where you go brake, because it can definitely gain you some time. You know, it can make the difference between actually jumping someone in the pits or not. So in Monza, once your front right wheel hits the white line, go 100% on the brakes and you will make it into the pit. So that's just another little tip for me, um, which you really do need. But also this, coming out of the pits, you won't be looking at just at the 100 meter board, about 120 meters out. That's where you won't be braking when you come out of the pits because again, that can really catch you out and it's very important when you're batting someone. So coming into the pits, as your right wheel hits the white line, that's when we'll be braking and then coming out of the pits, 120 meters, that's where you want to be braking as you exit. But now we're on the soft tire and for the strategy for this, I definitely recommend going from the red super soft to the soft tire. I would not go medium at all because the tire wear is about three to 4% per lap. So my recommendation is anything after lap eight, you will make it to the end because three to 4%, you know, that's gonna give you 80% on lap 20, you know, lap. 28 if there were 20 at well they were 28 laps of this race so you can easily make it to the end and on the soft tire the harder the compound the more resistant it is to actually getting a puncture so on soft tires normally you only get a puncture on like 85 percent or something like that 85 to 95 or 90 plus which i managed to do in uh azerbaijan baku so i would recommend doing two lap runs on the super soft tire, no more than two lap runs because you you know, you don't want to sacrifice that little bit of performance. Two lap runs and then anything from lap onwards on the soft, you can definitely do it. And I recommend probably lap eight or nine is really the sweet spot because you get a decent undercut, but that is definitely what I recommend. So hopefully this was useful for you today. Hopefully go more detail for future episodes, but this is Monza, Mastering Monza. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Enjoy this and I hope it helps you in future. Peace. Everything we know be lost and changed for something new. Only time will tell.